Welcome to Organize with professional organizer Rachel Seavey. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., Rachel shares her expertise and compassionate approach to help you deal with overwhelming clutter. Rachel? Hey, collectors. Welcome to the Organize podcast. I am your host, professional organizer Rachel Seavey, and this episode is all about clutter, the dust it creates, and how it could be causing you some respiratory issues. I'm not trying to scare you. These are just facts that I found online, and I am constantly in dusty homes. So chances are, if you're around a lot of clutter, you are around a lot of dust. Um, like I said, almost every home I go into is plagued with dust. And, and these are especially areas that are hard to reach, or areas that are completely neglected. I see different textures of dust and dust accumulated with pet hair, which has never been vacuumed and constantly underfoot for 30 years, actually looks much different than the dust that's on top of 200 Beanie Baby Bears that have not been dusted for 30 years. So there's different consistencies of dust that I've witnessed. And this is all stuff that we're breathing in. And we, you know, you're probably used to living in it. And to the bare eye, a lot of the stuff that's airborne, you can't see. So you might think, oh, you know, one day I'll get to that. But I just want to give you some facts and maybe it'll encourage you to declutter a little bit and get some of that dust out of there. I've seen dust, the texture of dryer sheets, literally like dust dryer sheets where it's all woven together like fabric. And I've gathered enough dust bunnies to make the world's largest stuffed pillow. I see a lot of dust. Almost every home I go into has dust. My house has dust. And sometimes it's fine. Like the kind of dust you would see after sanding something wooden, you know, in a workshop for many years. But this person doesn't own a sander and hasn't been sanding. So sometimes, though, it's even more granulated like sand on the beach. Dust comes in all sorts of different shapes and variations and consistencies. And I don't know that any dust is really the same as the other, especially if it's, you know, over a decade of not dusting, then it kind of takes on a life of its own. It almost has a pulse. So whether you're clean or a messy person, dust happens. Like I said, I have dust. In the end, we all end up as dust. Dust is a fact of life. Now, it could just be dust from blowing in from the outside. It could be a combination of things. It could be dust coming off of your clothing and shoes from being outside. Definitely dust from our pets. If we have pets and they go in and out, or even if they're just indoor kitties and are using a litter box, they definitely create a lot of dust. What's also mixed in with this dust is kind of gross. I mean, we've already talked about pet hair, but have you thought about all the dead skin cells? Yes, your dead skin cells flake off and end up into your surroundings. And not just in your bathtub and bathroom and things like that. I mean, your carpet, your sofas, your linens, and if you haven't vacuumed in over 30 years, which is totally okay, you probably have a lot of dust around you. And that dust also has trash particles and dust mites. What are dust mites? This is something that people don't think of when they look at all the dust around their house. So I love Wikipedia. I'm just going to quote them here. Wikipedia explains dust mites like this. House dust mites are present indoors wherever humans live. Positive tests for dust mite allergies are extremely common among people with asthma. Dust mites are microscopic arachnids whose primary food is dead human skin cells, but they do not live on living people. They and their feces 
and other allergens that they produce are major constituents of house dust. But because they are so heavy, they are not suspended for long in the air. They are generally found on the floor and other surfaces until disturbed uh, by walking, for example. And it could take somewhere between 20 minutes and two hours for dust mites to settle back down out of the air. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not done yet, collectors. I know if you're already grossed out, I'm just going to continue because this might be the motivation you need to declutter. Who knows? House dust mites, due to their very small size and translucent bodies, are barely visible to the unaided eye. A typical house dust mite measures 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. And for accurate identification, one needs at least 10 times magnification. And we'll reiterate, they feed on skin flakes from humans, animals, and they also feed on some mold. Predators of dust mites are other allergenic mites, such as silverfish. The average life cycle for a male house dust mite is 10 to 19 days. A mated female house dust mite can last up to 70 days, laying 60 to 100 eggs in the last five weeks of her life. In a 10-week lifespan, a house dust mite will produce approximately 2,000 fecal particles and an even larger amount of partially digested enzyme-covered dust particles. Ugh. The mite's gut contains potent digestive enzymes that persist in their feces and are major inducers of allergic reactions such as wheezing. The mite's exoskeleton can also contribute to allergic reactions. Okay, if you've had enough, I, I'm going to take a break. And if you aren't grossed out yet, I double dare you to Google image a dust mite. Yucky. Those things are so gross looking. So not only are you breathing in the dust, but you're breathing in these nasty little bugs. And, um, you know, if if you're surrounded by a lot of dust and dust mites and everything else, it's no surprise to you that you suffer from respiratory or breathing problems. A lot of my clients have breathing machines next to them, and sometimes their breathing machines are covered in trash, and sometimes it's just dust that they're covered in. It's very rare that I see a pristine breathing machine. Here are some more facts about dust. And again, from Wikipedia, this is all stuff that I'm not making up. This is online. You can look it up yourself. Dust are fine particles of matter. It generally consists of particles in the atmosphere that come from various sources, such as soil, dust lifted by weather, volcanic eruptions, and pollution. Dust in homes, offices, and other human environments contain small amount of plant pollen, human and animal hairs, textile fibers, paper fibers, minerals from outdoor soil, human skin cells, burnt meteorite particles, and many other materials which may be found in the local environment. House dust can become airborne easily. Care is required when removing dust to avoid causing the dust to become airborne. A feathered duster tends to agitate the dust so it lands elsewhere. Products like Pledge and Swiffer are specifically made for removing dust by trapping it with sticky chemicals. And this is from Wikipedia. I'm not promoting Pledge or Swiffer, although I do use those products at home. While vacuum cleaners with HEPA type filters or water filters or cyclones may filter more effectively than without these techniques, they still may exhaust millions of particles per cubic foot of air circulated. Ugh. So even as you're vacuuming, it sounds like you're just spewing out more dust. Um, central vacuum cleaners can be effective in removing dust, especially if they are exhausted directly to the outdoors. So that being said, I have five tips on reducing the dust in your home. 
And these are all based on what I read on Wikipedia, my personal experience. Number one, wash your bedding and laundry often. Dust mites drown in water. Number two, vacuum as often as you can to remove dust mites and everything else. I know it says that you'd still continue to spew some more out. Well, at least you can capture some of them, especially if you have a HEPA filter or one of the water techniques. And make sure you empty your vacuum frequently and put it in a garbage bag and tie that bag really tight and immediately put it in an outdoor trash. Tip number three, use disposable dusters like Swiffers. I love the Swiffer because you can really see that the dust is lifted and trapped and make sure you immediately dispose of those used Swiffers just like you did of your vacuum dust. You don't want to leave these things around. Tip number four, declutter your home collectors. Declutter your home so that you can get to those hard to reach dust spots. The more you uncover, the more area you can vacuum and dust and clear. Tip number five, if you are immobile or disabled and can't do any of tips one through four because your physical health, please consider hiring someone or asking someone to help you wash your laundry, dust, and vacuum. Just those basic items so that you can have help reducing the dust in your home, especially if you have respiratory issues and you have one of those breathing machines next to your bed. I know that when I've gone into homes and done things like wash bedding or use a HEPA vacuum and dust, the air quality for me is immediately noticeable. I go from day one, I'm in there with a mask. It's very hard for me to breathe. My eyes are itching. I'm having to take Flonase and Claritin. And then day two on the job, once we've allevi alleviated some of that dust and some of the debris and the mites and you know whatever else has fallen onto the floor with our HEPA vacuum, I come in and it's, you know, much better. And by the end of the job, you can walk in the home without a mask and not be feeling like you have to run outside and sneeze. So I, I do notice how helpful these tips are in my personal life and personal work. I mean, I just vacuumed this morning because I have two small dogs and I have two kids that are home this weekend. And basically, I'm not even a super neat you know, eater. And we were having banana bread this morning. So I like to just vacuum and get it over with. I know uh, one of my colleagues vacuums every day. I don't have the luxury of doing that. Maybe I do and I just don't make time, but that seems a little bit much. But vacuum as often as you can. If you have a central vacuum, that sounds like that's the best deal. And you know, all of this take, sounds great, but a lot of us don't get it done. And that's because we don't actually make the time to do these things like declutter, obviously, but dusting and vacuuming. And we don't make time for that. So it just doesn't get done. So take some time after listening to this episode. Look at your schedule. See what area you want to dust or vacuum. And when you do decide to work in that area, please don't forget to wear a dust mask. You're worth it. I mean, you're breathing all of this stuff in that I just told you about. The dust mite, the dust mite feces, and their echoskeletons, and blah. So we like, um, I personally like and recommend 3M is the brand. And we like the N95 with the particulate filter uh, easily found at Home Depot or Amazon. And I also suggest that you wear gloves. You don't want to get that dust or dust mite, dust mite poop, dust mite skeletons all in your hands while you're dusting. So take some time after you dust to vacate that room. It says about two hours uh, to allow the airborne dust particles to settle back on the floor. Uh, I think it was two hours at least for the dust mites. So do some dusting, do some vacuuming, and then head out of that room for a few hours and, and let anything that you miss settle back onto the floor. Collectors, if you are listening to this podcast on YouTube, don't forget to show me some love. Click the thumbs up button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, or leave a comment. I love hearing what you have to say. Until next time, collectors. And remember, 
Happiness is a place between too little and too much. This has been Hoardganized with Rachel C.V. New episodes are available every Sunday at 6 p.m. and also on the Collector Care YouTube channel. Download Rachel's Affirmations for Collectors on iTunes or Amazon.com or sign up for Rachel's blog at CollectorCare.com and receive seven tips for clutter-free living. Thanks for listening.